on certain points, even things that I didn't have written down. Oh, but I guess I can't go on to the next note, though. So, you know, uh, I said all this stuff about rational behavior, rational thinking, uh, as it pertains to churchgoers and how they think about the Bible. And the, and the reason I brought that up is because, like I said earlier, uh, I don't believe that God supports gender equality, but I do support gender equality. Uh, and so how would I marry these ideas, you know? And, you know, I do imagine that God might confront me about my support for gender equality, and God might really get into me about it, you know. Uh, and there is Isaiah 118, where it says, Come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. So your sins be as crimson, they should be as wool, though they be scarlet, they should be white as snow. Come, let us reason together. And uh, I can imagine that God might give me the opportunity to reason with him and tell him, why I took a stance that I know he is diametrically opposed to. Um, so, there are some uh, deep spiritual truths that I'm not going to uh, get into. Um, and, but I, I will say this, that I do believe that God has always had it in his plan to eventually free the world from his direct authority. Uh, it was God who actually came up with the plan. God is very self-aware. He knows he's a hard God. He knows he's a fierce being. He said that he wants to be feared. Uh, the church likes to water that down. But no, God means he wants you to be afraid of him especially afraid to offend him, okay? But as indicated in the book of Job, you don't have to offend him in order for him to make your life hard. He can make your life hard just because he wants to make your life hard. It doesn't have to be in response to you having offended him, but he does indeed want you to be afraid of him, to be fearful of him. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's part of why I know so much about God and about spiritual matters is because I have a true fear of God. You know, but you might say, well, that fear didn't cause you not to take an opposite stance. But, uh, hey, but I did make it a point to uh, think about how I would answer God on this matter uh, so I didn't completely blow him off as being a non-issue, okay, not at all, um, so, oh, no, well, let me, let me just say that, uh, you know, God being self-aware, knowing that he's very fierce, deliberately being fierce, uh, he also knows that, uh, people, most people could not survive, uh, under his direct authority, you know, um, if he had not offered some form of salvation, uh, and so God actually has always had this plan to implement, uh, lower levels of Godhood, uh, and, and that's where we read about Jesus Christ and the 144,000. Uh, so, getting away from God, you know, you know it's, it's, it's not like I'm rebelling against him. You know, it's his plan for us to get away from him. Uh, but it's an organized plan and we have to meet certain requirements uh, in order to get away from him. Uh, 
And one of those requirements, of course, was that Jesus had to pass a test by obeying the Father. He went on to the point of death. And now Jesus Christ is set to become the ruler of the new earth, far away from heaven, you know. But he had to uh, satisfy God's requirements. And it wasn't just a matter of <clears throat> Jesus obeying God uh, for 33 years and then obeying by going to the cross. And then because he obeyed God, uh, God says, okay, I'm not mad at anybody now. No, Jesus was earning a position. And so Jesus, you know, because he uh, went through this very hard test in order to earn his position, he now has say-so over whose sins and what sins uh, his blood covers. And he decides uh, when, somebody, when he just can't deal with somebody, he can't fix them, he can't get them right, and he hands them up to God. Uh, it says in John chapter 3 that if any man obey not the Son, the wrath of God abideth on him. You, you don't obey the lesser God who is kinder than, than God Almighty, kinder than God the Father, then uh, you get handed up to God Almighty who deals with you very harshly, okay? And you could end up in the lake of fire for eternity. Um, but that brings me back to the equality issue because I don't believe that God puts women in hell. He holds men responsible for what happens in the world. Uh, and because God knows what he made and because God does not uh, support gender equality, you know, God... Uh, harshly punishes those who he has empowered to uh, do right, but who just won't do right. But those whom he has not uh, mentally, spiritually empowered to uh, do right, he actually does not cast into hell. So men can go to hell, but I don't believe that women go to hell. Okay, I didn't actually read that uh expressly stated in the Bible, but I, I've just thought long and hard about a lot of things that I have read, uh, and the fear of the Lord is only the beginning of knowledge, only the beginning, you know, and there are a lot of, uh, shall I say, extra-biblical conclusions that you can draw by reading the Bible and by discussing them and saying, hey, what does this imply and uh, how does this factor into today's life, uh, today's society, and so forth and so on, the kinds of things that don't get done enough in our society. And when people have some sort of Bible study, uh, a lot of times they just talk about their preconceived notions that, that are the result of their emotions and what they choose to believe. Uh, and a lot of times they'll reject the logical conclusions that uh, are presented to them because it, those, conclu those conclusions don't satisfy their emotions. You know, they have a really fucked up way of thinking. And like I say, you know, men are underutilizing their rationale these days. The men have been emotionalized. Uh, and I'm not actually, <clears throat> I'm not angry at the women for emotionalizing the men, uh, especially in these days uh, of gender equality, the days since women's lib, and the passage of, or the, I shouldn't say passage, but uh, the Roe v. Wade decision and so forth, you know, and women have for pretty much all of my life uh, have uh, told men to be emotional, be sensitive, make yourself vulnerable, so forth and so on, okay? Uh, and I'm not angry at women for emotionalizing men. I'm not even angry at men for being emotionalized. Becoming a bunch of irrational fuckers. Not even 
angry at the men for letting it happen to them, you know. But, you know, I, <clears throat> when I was young, a common expression was, don't cry over spilled milk. So, women having emotionalized men, men having allowed themselves to be emotionalized, uh, it spilled milk. Um, in the book of Isaiah, I think it's chapter 14, verses 12 through 14, where it references the fall of Lucifer. I personally actually believe that, that Lucifer slash Satan is a female, uh, but, it, but it uses the phraseology, thou who dost weaken the nations, thou who dost weaken the nations. Uh, and the primary way in which the nations are weakened is that the men are emotionalized and uh, discouraged from using their rationale uh, and so that there's that and there are a number of other reasons as to why I would say that Satan is most likely a female I mean Satan used Eve to tempt Adam Delilah to tempt Samson uh, Job's wife to tempt Job uh, and and so some of the primary stories of of temptation and men being brought down uh they include women being the tempters you know <laughs> and, and so yeah um but there are just all kinds of reasons as to why i firmly believe until god tells me otherwise that satan is a female um but that doesn't mean that Women alone do evil. Um, God himself says that he does good and evil. And so, but God is rational. And and uh, he does necessary evils that lead to greater good. And that brings me right back to salvation. So God... Uh, has always had in his plan, I believe, to set people free from his direct authority, uh, and he's kind of phasing it in. Uh, he has not stopped ruling over this world yet. Jesus is still being trained, but because God has a faithful, obedient trainee slash son uh, sitting at his right hand, God has kind of piped down a little bit in terms of uh, the fierceness that he exhibits toward the world. And so we have partial salvation right now. We don't actually have full salvation. We have partial salvation. Uh, and, and uh, but, oh, let me see. <laughs> so, that said, um, because, God does plan to cut us loose, and God will, I believe, begin working on another pair of worlds, setting them up. Um, we do have some latitude to do some things differently than uh, God might actually prefer. Um, and... You know, if, if your thought level is high enough, you know, and, and you do things that are, that make sense to do if you're going to support gender equality, you know, then God might actually be okay with that. Now, I will say that gender equality can be its own punishment. You know, it's one of those things where you want it so much, but when you get it, you don't really like it. Uh... Or you don't like the primary aspects of it, but gender equality, uh, from where I stand anyway, it, it involves seeing the woman as being just as mentally capable as the man and holding her to the same mental uh, standards, the same mental requirements, the same uh, behavioral standards, and not, not ever just giving her a pass because she's a woman, because she's emotional, uh, not condescending toward her in any way, but 
it also means that, you know, when it comes to things that I would get angry at a man for saying or doing, the woman should expect to catch it just the same way. Uh, things where you would understand me actually punching a man in his teeth, um, you should understand or should, you should expect me to punch a woman in her teeth if she were to say or do the exact same things that caused me to punch a man in his teeth. I mean, I'm not saying that I have done it. I'm not saying that I would do it. But you should expect the same, okay? Now, if you expect that that I would um, hit a man for saying or doing certain things, then uh, then you should expect that that man would, would know that and that he would not do those things that he would uh, expect to make me hit him, okay? And when it comes to a woman, it's the same deal, you know? If it's understandable, you know, that that uh, certain defenses could cause me to just be... Because I'm human and because, you know, I go through what humans go through, if you would expect certain things to cause me to clock her, you know, then instead of saying, hey, it's terrible that she did that because she's a woman, you know, look at the offense. And if the offense is something which you would expect to cause me to hit a man, then you need to turn to that woman if she did the same thing and say, hey, look, you know, I don't pity you because you're a woman. You did what would have caused a man to get his ass whooped, and you got your ass whooped, and you deserved it. You know, um, so I actually am not a violent guy. Uh, sometimes I actually regret being nonviolent and feel like people have gotten away with wrongs that they shouldn't have gotten away with. Well, I, I should have knocked them upside their head, or worse. You know, but, but um, you know, I, I do sometimes regret being a nonviolent guy. Um, but where was I going with that? <laughs> so, so, um, yes, yeah, so just expect the same treatment for a woman. You know, uh, don't expect her to be treated more gently because she's a woman, if she says or does the things that w would naturally cause a man to catch it, okay? Um, and, and so that, that's just kind of a one, one way to help to begin to explain the not so nice side of equality. But if you disagree with what I just said, then you probably don't want full gender equality but but uh even though i'm taking a while to get to it you know i i did say earlier you know that i have to consider how god would respond uh if you were to find out you know what well, i shouldn't say find out but if you were if god were to, to uh, confront me about my support for gender equality. Um, and, and I did say a few minutes ago that because God has always planned to set us free from, from himself, being as self-aware as he is, uh, you know, I mean, he said to Moses, tell Pharaoh, I am sent you, you know, I am, I am what I am, <laughs> you know. And I assume he's thought a lot about what he is. Uh, but... Uh, you know, so so God could very well allow me to support gender equality as long as uh, I've thought, you know, enough about how to do all the things that that would go along with a sensible. Uh, set of, you know, ideas, policies around gender equality. And I just gave you the key one, which is, you know, that women have to be expected to think as well and behave as well as men 
if they're going to uh, be considered equal. You know, women can't change uh, the scientific facts around how bodies work. You know, and a 100-pound woman can't expect to uh, lift as much as even a 100-pound man, for that matter. Uh, because women just have a lower percentage of muscle mass in their bodies. Uh, and that's just the way it is. But mentally, uh, it's, it's just not as obvious, not as apparent as to what a woman can or can't do mentally uh, that a man can do. And simply put, if we conclude that a woman's mind is weaker than a man's, I, uh, then equality is not even a reality. And yes, I did say that God knows what he made and that God made men with the ability to be rational and he made women emotional. Uh, but there, there are some spiritual anomalies or some very difficult spiritual tasks that can uh, make the, the woman uh, rational, that can get her to a place of being rational. And so I, I basically would have to be extremely hard on some women in order to get them there. Uh, and I haven't been one to just go out and really lay into every woman that I meet and tell her that she has to do such and such in order to qualify as rational. Um, what I have done, though, is I focused on some uh, women that, that are in influential positions, women in D.C. government whose decisions affect uh, thousands of poor people. I, my homeless advocacy has... Um, you know, brought me face to face with government officials for a good many years now. And from June of 2006, when I started advocating until New Year's Day of 2015, I was dealing primarily with, uh, well, entirely with male mayors and primarily with male administrators in their cabinets. And, uh, as of January 2nd, 2015, we got a female mayor, you know, so it wasn't like I chose to only deal with men at one point, and then I chose to only deal with women. Uh, you know, I dealt with who was in power, you know, and I didn't need, I wasn't even trying to differentiate between how male and female administrators or administrations uh, function. But there were truths that just kind of kept smacking me upside the head, and, and I just had to realize that hey, it is what it is. Uh, men uh, in positions of leadership acted this way. Women in positions of leadership act that way. And I won't get, go into any great detail on how things played out, but I will say that the male mayors and their largely male cabinets uh, they knew how to have the hard conversations. Things got tense sometimes. We got nose to nose sometimes, but we had the conversation, and uh, it didn't become vindictive and passive aggressive and underhanded. We were straight up, you know. And when we left, even from those tense nose to nose, uh, evil eye conversations, we each knew where the other stood, you know. And it wasn't a bunch of drama, and it wasn't uh, any, weren't, there weren't court cases between myself and D.C. government. Um, but that changed, uh, all of that changed when the female administration came in. It actually took a little more than two and a half years before it finally happened. Two and a half years into the Bowser administration, uh, actually two years and nine months. It was October of 2017 when the shit hit the fan. But, uh, and I dealt with legal issues until January of 2019. So for 15 months. But, uh, 
I actually speak to men and women in the same way, but the men had rational responses and we had the conversation even if it was tense, whereas the women got emotional and became vindictive and underhanded and passive aggressive and and they exaggerated uh my mannerisms even though I used the same mannerisms that I used with men and said that they were threatening, yada yada yada. Uh but um so women, you know, simply put, um well I should tell you that there there is uh there are court records that if you if you get them uh printed out if you 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 would find that the court actually did not find a single uh threat <laughs> um so it was just basically an an exaggeration by uh by these females uh, and and I'm glad to uh, go through a process whereby to prove what I'm saying, you know. So it's not like I'm just misrepresenting the facts, but yeah. So and I'm sure that there are plenty of people out there within the sound of my voice, plenty of men out there who would say that that women took the man's mannerisms, those other men's mannerisms. Uh, which the same ones which they use with other men, and and the women basically exaggerated matters and things that other men would not have taken as being 